Well, that was one well needed rest and definitely a good time off in Miami, 305 strong. Thank you, Scene Mobile Tech, for coming in, holding down the Technoid Fort, but allow the master to return to his domain. And I'll take it from here, but I'll see you on the next live episode. Anyway, guys, we got a lot of stuff to talk about in so little time, so let's not waste any time. Let's get right to the news, starting with the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V. <laughs> So the first story, the main story of the day, the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V. Now, if you guys haven't followed my Xperia saga, I have had a very rocky relationship with Sony fans, as it sometimes can go 50-50 on what I say. Some people will like it, some people will hate it, a lot of people will trash me, and then there's just those that do nothing and add nothing to the convo. But I'm all here for both sides, and that's not stopping me from covering the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V, because whether you guys believe me or not, I actually really think that phone is full of potential, but I just think that it's priced in an area where not a lot of people would be willing to spend. They'd be willing to make compromises to get a better value than the best of the best. But that's not to say that it doesn't deserve that. It is a great phone. But with the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V, there is a little sense of deja vu going on, and there is an issue apparently going on in regards to the release date, the release cycle, and it's something that I've been reading about, and it's actually something that I agree with. According to the reports, it says that the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V will of course be making its debut sometime around now, as usual like all the other events that they've had in the past. Sony is continuing with this phone, they really want to push it, and to some surprise, it actually has had some decent market share pickup, and it actually has a great software support, it has great cameras, it's got great display, a headphone jack, so that's a big plus right there. And most importantly, it's the best of everything that Sony offers into one package. However though, there is some things to talk about. In regards to the renders and the designs, it's essentially going to be the same phone that we have seen and with very minimal changes to the design itself. Now, the only thing that we know that is changing will probably be the camera technology, which is of course the main thing that Sony always prides itself with. And there is also reports saying that we are going to also see the new CPU, which is the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. However, there are some conflicting reports saying that Sony may delay the phone so they could put the 8 Gen 2 Plus or the 8 Plus, that, you know, slightly modified version of the Snapdragon. But it then goes into question with the release date. Several reports are saying that the release will happen during the summer of this year, Q3. Some reports are suggesting that they might even do it earlier. We don't know exactly the release date. It could also be happening within next month or June, but there is an issue that a lot of people are talking about, and that is the timing of this phone. Because it's being released in such a weird position, it would explain why not a lot of people are buying this phone or are in the interest of the mindset. Now, you can make the argument that they probably want to do it a month before the Samsung Galaxy event, but here's the thing that you need to understand about the foldables and this phone. The foldables are completely a different category, a completely different market share for people that are looking for something new. The Sony Xperia 1 Mark V is a premium smartphone that should be in line with the competition, but the biggest issue right now that a lot of people are speculating is of course trying to convince people to get this phone. It's been a struggle because they've released four variants of this phone and while they've all had significant upgrades in some respects, this one will most likely be the most minimal of the four that they've released. So trying to grab market share is going to be a little hard, but on the plus side, they do also have their cheaper end models, which are also in the work, the Xperia 5 series. But solely talking about the Xperia 1 Mark V, I will be honest with you guys, I think that Sony should reconsider the release date for this phone, just to time it up better to get the latest Snapdragon chip, instead of relying on their Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, get the 8 Gen Plus 2, or anything that they're going to call that model, just like what the Folds do, so that way it'll be on par with performance. But also in regards to the design, I do think it's time that Sony does try something new to give more of a warrant to upgrade if you are an Xperia user. Besides the software, maybe finally put an in-person or 
as I would say it, a fingerprint scanner built into the display. We've seen Samsung and other display manufacturers perfect this system, and it is becoming a lot more reliable now. So maybe it's time for them to try something new and maybe try to get some more people to go in on it. But I don't think Sony's gonna do that. I think the home button side fingerprint scanner is the way that they're going, which actually works very, very well. I don't have any complaints there, but they need to do something to differentiate this version. And listen, at the end of the day, it is an expensive phone. It is not cheap by any stretch of the imaginations but the technology everything that's inside of this phone is warranted i just think that they need a new release date a new release cycle and maybe start partnering with carriers start partnering make some deals so that you can get more notoriety to this phone because as it stands right now they don't have any market share and to any sony fans that are mad at what i'm saying i'm sorry but not sorry because listen i deal with the numbers i deal with the reality and the reality is the sony xperia phones do not have any market share but they could get there if they do a few things so we'll see we'll wait i'll keep you updated but i'm not sorry if you're offended at all this is my job this is what i do now we move on to the next story now a word from our sponsor so as you know the technoid show is a proud affiliate of Slate Chocolate Milk. Slate Milk has been kind enough to work with the Technoid Show for almost a year now, and I am happy to announce that they have really stepped it up in regards to protein milk for those that work out like myself, but also for people that are lactose intolerant. Slate Milk is lactose free. It is also low on sugars and carbs. It is only 100 calories depending on the model you get, but most importantly, their flavors are delicious. I have drank them numerous times on my channel if you have not seen, and they have some great flavors flavors from the original classic chocolate to mocha, dark chocolate, French vanilla, latte, etc, etc. And now with their new powder formula, which you can now add to make your own, they've just expanded their lineup even more. Head on over to slatemilk.com, check out all their flavors and choices, use a promo code technoid to save yourself some money at checkout. And most importantly, thank you so much to Slate Milk for being a part of the Technoid Show. Now we got that out of the way, let's get to the last story. And the last story is the iPhone 15 Pro, because why not? Why not talk about the iPhone 15 Pro? Well, this one actually does have some merits I want to talk about. According to several reports, it seems that the Apple has decided not to make solid state buttons. It looks like physical buttons are going to stick around for one more year. According to reports, it seems that there were some internal testings that Apple were doing with the solid state buttons buttons and long story short it just seems like it wasn't working out so rather than try to release it and knowing that it's going to have all its faults they've decided to just opt to hold off on the solid state buttons using the Taptic engine and have instead gone back to the physical buttons which I think nobody's going to get mad at I think actually everyone would love physical buttons and if it means that they need more time to work on it that's perfectly fine. Now the reports are saying that because they're holding off, there will be a few tweaks in the design, but essentially everything is still slated to go as follow. I just wanted to give you guys that quick update because if you are upset that Apple's trying to eliminate the buttons and whatever, it's not really a big deal breaker because they're going to be using the same feature that they did with the iPhone 7 with the Taptic engine being responsive to the pressure, to the gesture. But on the flip side, if you actually like a physical button, well, you got your physical button back, and I do think that, in my opinion, it's actually something that I think is warranted, and I don't see that being an issue, so just wanted to talk about that real quick. And that's it for today's episode of Technoid. Now, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, hit the like button. If you disliked the video, you can hit the dislike button. That helps circulate my views as well. As always, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in the next episode. Have a great rest of your day, guys. Take care, stay safe, have a good day, and peace!